Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day is going really well. I'm in Luminar 4 and I'm diving in today, no pun intended, I guess, to my deep dive videos. I'm going to start a series of those. Um, I don't know if I'm going to do all of them in a row like I did my tutorial series, which you can catch in my playlist on Luminar 4 there, but I've got a number of deep dive videos and the first four I want to do are around the canvas tools. I did do a video about canvas tools, which is part of that playlist uh, tutorial series. And I touched on the four different canvas tools in one video, but I want to come back and do a specific video about each one. Today is the first one, and that is the crop tool, uh, also known as crop and rotate. So this is a, uh, it's, well, it's a fabulous tool actually, and I'm sure you're already using it. I just want to walk through, give you some things to think about, and hopefully, um, I don't know, give you some things to think about. So let's go into it. Here we go, I've got a photo, and I just did real quick like AI enhance and color just to kind of get the photo looking better because that's what it looked like and that's what it looks like now. So the canvas tools are up here, this little uh, pencil icon with the um, ruler is the word I was looking for. Next to it, click on that and you can go into crop and rotate right there. There's also this icon on the top which is totally the same thing. You can click either one to get into crop and rotate. I'll go ahead and do that now. Let's cover rotate first because that's quick, right? Two ways you can rotate a photo. You've got an angle right up here, and you can just say zip, zip, left or right. Um, I gotta be honest, I can never get that very straight doing it that way. I always feel like I screw it up. So I'm gonna hit reset, note the reset button there. Um, and the other way to, to rotate the photo is right here. If you get your mouse kind of over to the, the side, um, it probably works, yeah, it works on the left side too. I always go to the right side, I never even thought of that till now. Uh, but if you get your mouse out here, you can see it makes a little kind of a semicircular thing with two arrows, uh, one on either end, and that just allows you, if you hold the mouse down and drag it up or down, to just uh, straighten the photo. So I'm gonna look at the horizon because my photos are always crooked. Ooh, I think that's straight, and I'm gonna say done. Um, and that's how you straighten a photo. Um, so when you hit done, notice you're out of the crop and rotate tool. So I'm gonna click crop and rotate again. I'm gonna go back in there because even though I've straightened it, now I want to talk about cropping. Photography, I read a quote somewhere from a, a photographer and he said that photography is an art of exclusion. Um, and you know, I really like that because when you're taking photos, I'm, I, at least when I'm taking photos, I'm often thinking, what can I get in the photo? What am I trying to get in the photo? But you know, subconsciously, uh, maybe, or, or consciously, you're thinking, what can I keep out of the photo? Um, and so it really is an art of exclusion. And to me, that's kind of what leads me into cropping, which is, um, I'm often ending up with photos where I'm like, I like 95% of this photo, but there's 5% of it I don't like, and if I can crop it out, I crop it out. Sometimes I'll do it for those reasons. Um, other times I'll crop because I just like different aspect ratios for different photos. And that's where you get into aspect ratios. So I'm gonna start over here on the left-hand side. I'm in the upper left menu. It says aspect, and if you click on that, you can see you got a number of choices here. Free, as the name implies, just allows you to freely move um, anywhere within the, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? You can move these corners and it will just freely move, right? So you can do anything you want in that regard in terms of cropping the photo. You can do that from any of these corners to get the same kind of thing going on, right? Um, I've made a mess of this thing here. Um, there we go, Oop, there we go. Um, uh, you can also, however, uh, take it from the top or the bottom or the sides, but you'll notice when you do that, it doesn't freely move in every direction like it does from the corners. It just comes in from that side, right? So if you take a look at that, I'm just squishing it in from that side. Here's the thing, once you squish it in, you can then move your photo if you wanted like a, a crop like that, which looks kind of good here. Um, that's kind of a close to a square crop. Uh, you can do those kind of things. So I'm gonna say reset. Notice when I hit reset, it reset my straightening too. So here's what I do, I crop first and get all my cropping set and then I rotate, okay? So um, having said that, I also wanted to point out there's this lock icon. When I clicked free, you'll see that the lock is open, which means, hey, it's not gonna stick with your original aspect ratio. But if you, um, uh, if you close that, uh, which is the default, it'll, it'll um, stay within a, a locked aspect ratio. So I can come down here and say 16 by 10. You can see what that does, right? So. These are basically aspect ratios, by the way, based like on your camera sensor. So I shoot, I shoot a full frame Sony, uh, crop sensor is the same, and that is a three to two aspect ratio. So it sort of 
three units of, of measurement across the horizontal plane and two units of measurement on the vertical, right? And so that's what three to two is. A micro four thirds is a four to three uh, aspect ratio. So you, you probably know this, I'm sure, with the type of camera that you have, but you can come in and adjust those later in the crop tool. I do that all the time. I absolutely adore the crop tool because I like to crop my photos. In particular, I really like to use this crop here, which is 16 by nine. A lot of movies are shot um, in 16 by nine. All my YouTube videos are in 16 by nine. And I've just, I've gotten to where I like that. It's a very pleasing um, aspect ratio to me visually. Um, and speaking of uh, sort of pleasing you visually, you've got a couple of tools here. I'm gonna hit reset again. A couple of tools to help you, um, and I'm gonna talk about those in a second. Let me finish over here. Lots of different things built in, including square. So if you're into Instagram and you really wanna Instagram this shot, you can just line that up the way you want. Um, I think I think something, actually, I'm gonna come a little bit over here, about like that. Here's why, um, and this gets into composition, and this is why crop tool, I think, and aspect ratio are important, and that is because compositionally, you wanna, um, do some things to make your photo as pleasing visually as possible. Um, this starts getting into the rule of thirds grid, which is highlighted here, and then the golden ratio grid, which is highlighted there. So these two grids are basically visual guides to help you with cropping. And what that does is they're based on two different schools of thought. The rule of thirds thought is, let me hit reset, um, the, the rule of thirds grid, which is highlighted here, you can see that there, and that's the golden ratio. If you look at the intersecting squares, uh, they intersect at a different point. So this is golden ratio, and that's rule of thirds. Rule of thirds is basically a tic-tac-toe board, sort of. Um, it's basically, uh, you know, two lines coming vertically and two going horizontally to create three different uh, groups of three squares, right? So three, six, nine squares. And um, the thing about this is they say key points of interest where the eye is naturally drawn are these intersecting points. So that square that square and these two squares over here. They're what I like to call power points. They may officially be called that, I don't know. But those are the points of interest and in where your eye is normally drawn. So as you can see, this is my original shot, um, unedited except for the filters that I applied because it's still crooked. Um, you can see that, but um, these uh, points intersect. You know, I did a pretty good job of lining that up there. Um, and in cropping this, if I were to go with a square crop, let me go back to what I was talking about. This is why I initially had it like that, or I had this, this PowerPoint, if you will, sort of dead on that. But I actually think I like it better over here, and let me explain why. I'm gonna go to about like that. Things I think about with composition, that's why I'm going into this, um, and that is, this is still firmly you know, dead on the lighthouse, which I think is important, but this one now is on that pathway, which I think helps. Um, the pathway comes from the bottom left and leads kind of up to the bottom right. So you kind of go from the bottom and you're led visually up to the lighthouse, hitting two of those points along the way, right? Which is this one about, you know, not quite halfway up the, uh, the stairs and that one there. But the other reason I like this crop for this photo is uh, these people here, when I had it over like this, um, I had those two people bear, there, but they were a little too close to the edge of the frame, and I wanted to pull them in a little more to give them a little bit of space between um, where they are and the edge of the frame. I don't need that third one, and I don't want that rock there, and I'm lined up good on this other grid over here. So the reason I like those people there is scale, um, and that's the other thing to think about, especially with photos like this, is if you have an element of scale that you can uh, leave in your photo, I think that helps. So it can be an anchoring element in the foreground, um, or in this case, I think those uh, those people on the beach give you a sense of scale, like, wow, that's not just like a small little lighthouse, that's kind of big, and it's on a fairly good size hill, and blah, blah, blah. Um, so something I think about, but I was really here talking about the rule of thirds, and in this case, with the one-to-one -one crop, or the Instagram crop, um, if, if you're into Instagram and the square thing. I'm not really, but um, you can pick any of these here, and as you click on them, it'll show you what it looks like, right? So fairly straightforward. And then you have the inverse of them down below. So instead of three to two, which is three across and two down, this is two across and three down. So it's been inverted. Does not really look good here. It cuts off too much of the ocean and blah, blah, blah. Um, I rarely use these inverted aspect ratios, but they're there. Also Facebook cover, Facebook feed, um, and custom. So you can say, I want a seven by, I don't know, I hit shift, hit tab, three. I don't know, I'm making this up. 
there's a seven by three. Now, I can enlarge that because, um, you know, it would look better large. Seven by three actually might look kind of okay, even though it's made up. Um, you know what, that seven by three that I just totally made up is not so bad. Now, I lose all this foreground here, which I think is bad. Um, so again, I'm making it up. The point was you can create your own custom ones. Down here, you can see some I just experimented with for fun. I'm gonna go back to original uh, and I'm gonna hit reset. And the next thing I wanna talk about here is the golden ratio grid. And that is just these PowerPoints. I still think of them as PowerPoints. And I think that's where your eye is naturally drawn. But the, um, the, the golden ratio overlay is based on the golden ratio, which has to do with the Fibonacci sequence and math. It becomes a math thing. Um, and there's a whole lot written about this, and I'm not gonna try to explain it all. I'm not an expert, I have a base understanding of it, but the truth is I rarely use the golden ratio grid, but um, it is there, which I think is nice to have. I tend to use the rule of thirds grid, which is this one over here. Uh, that's just my preference. But if you're interested in golden ratio, there's YouTube videos, there's articles, there's so much about it. It's worth checking out because it's just interesting. Um, as you continue to move on, you have um, flip horizontally here. So you click on that and all of a sudden my scene is backwards, right? Uh, and then here you have flip vertically, which it makes you know no, no sense at all here. And then this allows you to rotate on um, you know counterclockwise, right? So you would just flip to get all the way around and there we go. Um, and that's really it. That's a high level overview of the crop and rotate tool. And um, you know, actually more than a high level, more, more of a deep dive. Um, and so this is the first of my deep dive video. I'm gonna keep doing some more. Next up will be erase, and then I'll do clone and stamp as well as lens and geometry. Um, I just think they're important tools. I wanna spend a few minutes talking about them, especially if you're new to Luminar. This is not really any different than Luminar 3 was, but they're important tools to have at your disposal, important things to know about, and just wanted to share some thoughts. So thank you for watching. I appreciate it. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do. I'll be back real soon with more videos. And don't hesitate to leave me a comment, like, share, that sort of thing. And I'll be seeing you, my friends. Hope you're having a wonderful day. And uh, take care. See you soon. And adios.